Uh, hello, everyone. I thought it should be a good idea to walk you through the latest version of the PDF highlight extension for Roam and also describe a little bit of things happening under the hood for those of you who are interested. So first, uh, we have this set of parameters that you can control and uh, set it in the JavaScript code uh, that you paste into Roam. Uh, I think the simplest one is the viewer dimension. So we have two mode, static mode and uh, non-static mode. And by static mode, we mean uh, when the sidebar is closed, what's the size of the PDF? So let's see. When uh, the sidebar is closed, you can determine the size of your PDF iframe by two numbers. So one is PDF aesthetic height and width. And when the sidebar is open, uh, it uh, is flexible. So uh, you can change the width of the uh, PDF using uh, the resize handle that you have. And the height is going to be PDF mean height when the sidebar is open. And uh, PDF mean width and height uh, are supposed to be smaller than static height and width. Otherwise, the static item widths are useless. Basically, uh, these two will take over. So play with these two options and see uh, what is best for your setup, your screen size, etc. So you can open two uh, PDFs side by side and resize them as you wish. Uh, next, we have two output, two output modes, cousin mode and child mode. So these are, uh, this is going to determine the place that a highlight is being shown uh, after you add highlight to the PDF. So let's demonstrate that using an example. So I have a PDF over here and uh, I select PDF, add highlight, uh, select text, add highlight, or uh, press Alt and select an area and then add highlight. And what I get is two blocks containing the content of highlight under the PDF. So uh, this is why we call this the child mode. So we can collapse those uh, highlights and make them invisible. And mm, yeah, so uh, this is the child mode. Let's go and take a look at the cousin mode. So here I have uh, a page that I imported from Zotero. So if you're not familiar with Zotero, Zotero is a citation manager uh, program. And there is a add-on that uh, exports uh, Zotero uh, citation or information about the paper, we can say, uh, in a format that you can import to Rome. So I've basically imported this file from Rome and then added this PDF. So these are uh, these are my uh, metadata information, and uh, each one of them is an attribute. So you uh, see that we have two co uh, columns over here for attributes. And uh, now I am in the cousin mode. And in the cousin mode, as you may expect, so we have a grandparent. So this is my uh, PDF block which is a child, I have a parent for it. It's another block and I can collapse it. And I have another parent for this PDF parent block. I call this grandparent, which is basically my page. So there is a grandparent present and because of that, you can have an uncle. So this is my uncle block. And uh, as you may expect, if I add highlights, it's going to be uh, printed out under this uh, highlight node as the cousin of the PDF. So that's the reason of the naming. So add highlight, add highlight, and let's see, we have it over here. And you can jump around uh, like this. And personally, I like this better because you can uh, collapse everything. You can open the highlights, for example, in the sidebar and you can uh, open the PDF in the main window and then uh, and then jump around 
and you can add your comments to each highlight uh, like this or even as the parent block and yeah so uh, this is more aligned with what we have uh, exported from Zotero another important difference between these two modes is in a way that we locate the meta uh, data or meta information about the paper by meta information I mean things like title author and any attribute that you set so this is for example my uh, attribute that just that I just came up with so you can have metadata for each PDF and we use it in uh, a couple of places in our code I'm going to describe that uh, soon but uh, in these two modes we locate those uh, meta information uh, differently or let's call them meta attributes uh, differently so in the cousin mode we go up to the grandparent which is uh, this page for example and uh, look at the subtree of this page and search for uh, attributes or metadata and in, in in the child mode as you may expect because there is no grandparent we go to the parent and look for meta information so you can basically uh, add uh, metadata over here so this is my author or you don't need the uh, metadata uh, block so you can have uh, you can have your metadata anywhere in that subtree starting from the parent so this is my title for example yeah so these are the two key differences one was the place that we originally output the highlights and the other one is uh, where you can have the metadata next thing that i wanted to mention is uh, these two buttons so this one is just alias to uh, the pdf so if you hover over it you see the pdf and uh, this one is jump to annotation button and you see the page number as a text so this annotation is on page one and let's see this one is on page five and as you saw new annotations or new highlights are uh, shown at the top of the uh, highlight list and if you click on these you jump to the corresponding place and uh, an easy way of doing this because of the uh, size of the pdf and stuff like that is to open this in the sidebar and then focus on the parent PDF block and jump around. So this is, uh, I think, uh, a, a, a more conventional way of doing this. Okay, next I wanted to talk about uh, things that we put in uh, your clipboard when you add highlight. So whenever you add highlight, uh, we put something into your clipboard and you can control what that is using this option. So it uh, can be a block reference to the recent highlight or the text of the recent highlight. So here I have set this option to copy block reference. Now I added this highlight and if I paste the clipboard, I see that this is uh, a block reference to this highlight and you see that counter over here. And um, yeah, so, um, you can use this in your outline and uh, in your writing and leave the main highlight alone. So basically, uh, these are the labels that you are using. Main highlight is for this. This is the reference highlight. And if you set this to false, what you get is basically the text of the highlight. And um, you see uh, three new buttons for reference highlight. So uh, this is again jump to annotation. You're using a different character or different appearance compared to the main highlight to distinguish these two. And if you click on it, you jump around. And even if uh, the PDF, uh, even if you close the PDF and it's not present on your page, if you click on any of these buttons, it's going to open it in the sidebar and uh, jump to the correct place 
So, uh, yeah, so basically, junk to annotation uh, is present in both main highlight and uh, reference highlight. So the other two are replaced with text and replaced with alias. So if you click on replace with text, you get the text of the highlight, you can modify it. So the idea is that uh, you shouldn't modify the main highlight uh, ever because this is how the person saying and uh, writing. So you can comment on it, write under it or above it, uh, but you cannot change it. And uh, if you want to use it, you can copy block reference and uh, convert it to text and use it, or you can uh, set the copy block reference to false and just uh, have the text of annotation whenever you annotate something, highlight something. And you can guess that this one is repla replacing uh, as text, but adds an a alias to, to the original highlight, to the main highlight. So this is basically referring to this highlight on page three. So, yeah. So these are the uh, three other buttons that we have for the reference highlight. And you can, uh, you, you're free to move around highlights wherever you want. So cousin and child mode only determine the place that we print the highlights, but after that, you can uh, drag and drop, for example, the highlight over here. And uh, again, buttons should work. So there is no PDF over here. We need to open it. So if you click on this, it opens the PDF and jump to the correct place. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is the fact that you can delete the highlights from anywhere in your graph. So let's see. I grab this highlight, put it here, and it's on page three, given below are frequently, and I'm going to delete it from here. So you, you shouldn't delete the text, you should delete the block itself. So if you press escape and then delete, it deletes the whole block. And now let's open this uh, PDF again and see uh, if you have this on page three. So, yeah, so we don't have the highlight over here anymore. Okay, so you can basically uh, control the highlights in place uh, and you don't need to go back to this page, for example, to delete the highlights if you have it in any other place. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, the place that you save uh, your highlights. So if you go to all pages, you see uh, pages like this, rom slash js slash pdf slash data and some number. And these are basically uh, the place that we save uh, metadata of your highlights. So nothing is going to be on the servers. Everything is on your graph. And if you go to these pages, if you want, you can export these pages and save them because people have asked for uh, saving highlight data. So the first uh, block here is your uh, PDF URL. Uh, the second block is the uh, reference or UID of your PDF. And these are, uh, each row of this table is uh, basically uh, metadata of your highlight, like, uh, block reference of your highlight, coordinate of it, and also text of the highlight. Yeah, so if you see anything like this in your graph, don't be surprised or everything is fine. And uh, you're just trying to uh, hide everything, uh, which is visually unpleasant in this page. And also you can export each one of these files uh, individually for, uh, for, 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 your, uh, for your PDF files. And the other option that we have is uh, for breadcrumb attribute. So uh, you can determine any meta information that you are interested in, for example, title. And uh, if you go to the correct place, as I mentioned, uh, it's different for the cousin mode and child mode. If you go to the correct place and look at that subtree, for example, in the cousin mode, you go to the grandparent, which is this page. 
and look at this subtree uh, for uh, the attribute that you have picked. So here, title. So here is my title. We're going to use this and show it as a breadcrumb uh, when you hover over uh, any of the highlights or um, block reference highlights. So let's see. So if I go over here, uh, I'm going to see uh, the title and then page three. Okay. For the child mode, uh, the place that you need to put this, as I said, is under the parent of the PDF. And last thing that we have added is uh, citation format. So we have these three options for citation format. This is for block quotes. If you uh, make this true, what you will see is uh, your highlight text and uh, this is going to get added to the beginning of the highlight text and the appearance is going to be distinct. Uh, the other thing is citation format and citation key attributes. So these two are connected. You select another attribute. And as I said, uh, it's the, the way that we locate this attribute is different for cousin mode and child mode. Uh, but uh, I think the uh, most uh, straightforward use of this is to use the site key. So site key is an attribute that you get if you have imported files from Zotero. So this is my site key. And the site key is uh, also your page title with an at sign. So I tell the extension to look for site key and use this for citation. And this is my citation format. And for citation format, C key is basically the string that we uh, get from this attribute. So for example, C key here is this string. And this is the citation format that I have picked. So if I have this citation format and this site key, what I get is going to be something like this. And you see that this is an alias to this page. And uh, the text of this alias is also the title of this page. So it's kind of informative and it's similar to academic citation and yeah so you can pick title or whatever site key attribute that you want and uh, use it in your uh, and, and get it in your highlight uh, final note here is that you can disable any of these extra buttons by just setting the string value to empty a string you can do the same for uh, citation format and uh, also, if you leave the breadcrumb attribute and site key attribute empty, you're not going to you're not going to get anything uh, there. Yeah. So uh, these are current features. Let us know uh, what you think about them and um, how we can improve the extension. Thank you. Everyone.